Merry Christmas, you wonderful viewers. It's been a tough year, but it's been all right for me. My bath salt business in Colombia is doing really well. Now I've got a wine cellar stocked up for Christmas, and for dinner, I'm having the fanciest food ever. Pheasant stuffed with lobster. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Professor, are we going to watch the Christmas Star Wars movie? Silly Andy. The new Star Wars film comes out next Christmas. I know, I mean the holiday special. You promised you'd watch it with me. Oh, that Star Wars movie. Fuck. Such sights to show you. It's the 40th anniversary of Star Wars. Well, the holiday special television thing that every fan tries to forget. So bad is it that George Lucas made it his personal mission to try and destroy every VHS copy. But Andy managed to find one in a landfill, as well as a copy of E.T. for the Atari. My Christmas is fucking ruined. The holiday special starts off looking suitably tacky, and it's all very cheesy. But then it quickly slides into this weird, nightmarish, David Lynchian head fuck. Uh, Merry Christmas! There's over an hour and a half of this torture. Even waterboarding at Guantanamo Bay takes less time, and that's not as painful. Plus, you get to wash your face. Hygiene is important, people. So, who got dragged into this and who will be tearing my sanity to shreds? Starring Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. Oh, poor sweet-faced Mark. If only you knew what the future had in store for you. Harrison Ford as Han Solo. Looking pissed off and with a gun to his head. Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia. You shouldn't do drugs, okay? Drugs are bad. With Anthony Daniels as C-3PO. Peter Mayhew as Chewbacca. Okay, but then... R2-D2 as R2-D2. Yeah, don't give credit to the midgets suffocating in that thing, bastards. James Earl Jones as the voice of Darth Vader. Don't get your hopes up for Darth Vader. He appears for about one minute and does brief voice work in a cartoon. whoop de fucking do Introducing Chewbacca's family. His wife, Mala. Chewbacca has a wife? That is a beard to cover up your very close friendship with Han Solo. the same way about you two, pal. Father, Itchy. A Yeti and a Wookiee fucked, and that is their unholy offspring. His son, Lumpy. Hey, how touch your penis? Horrifying Jesus! Imagine that face staring through your bedroom window at night. You'd shit yourself inside out. Beatrice Arthur. Art Carney, Harvey Corman. And there's some old fogies from a bygone era of American television. The holiday special gets stuck into the action, with Han and Chewie getting nearly shot at by the Empire. Han has agreed to get Chewie back home for Life Day, the Star Wars equivalent of Christmas. But it has almost no Christmas iconography. Life Day doesn't feel very Christmassy. There's no Santa, no Christmas tree, and the only snow is going up Carrie Fisher's nose. We get a glimpse of what Chewie is missing out on, and we get subjected to something like ten minutes of gurning and loud, obnoxious Wookiee grunting. Lampy sounds like someone trying to clear their nose. <coughs> Do not watch with headphones. This scene needs fucking subtitles, or just not exist. 
but we learn that Chewie is an absent father. He goes gallivanting off with Solo, leaving his wife behind and his son who clearly has special needs. Jump! Lumpy, which is a good name for a pet tumour, is acting up so Gurning Grandpa tries to shut up the whiny fur turd by putting on a fuck awful holographic circus show. It's very bad, and the music that accompanies it, eh, it sounds like someone farting into a synthesizer. <laughs> After killing five minutes and some of my brain matter, the Chewbacca family Skype with Luke Skywalker using one of their many TV sets. Mark Hamill looks really weird, like some sort of male sex android. Either someone put Vaseline on the camera lens or overdid his makeup, but he looks very rubbery. Luke tries to alleviate their concerns over Chewbacca and tells them he's on his way and that you should try smiling. Come on, Ma, let's see a little smile. Luke, you insensitive prick. She's clearly had a botched facelift and can't smile. Ugh. Marla checks up on a trader friend, and we get an edge of your seat sales transaction with an Imperial Stormtrooper sporting a German porn mustache. Marla and a trader, played by Art Carney, talk about Chewie in obvious code words next to a trooper. Smart, smart people. And still, the special continues with more inane bullshit as Marla then tunes into a cooking show hosted by a manic space transvestite. Words I'd never thought I'd say. It's utterly bizarre. And Marla seems compelled to follow its frantic orders. It's, it's very weird. Also, why is Chewbacca's missus wearing an apron? Why, are, are Wookiees meant to wear clothes? Wasn't that a robot chicken sketch? You mean to tell me you've been naked all these years? <laughs> Maybe it's to stop her fur getting matted with cake mix, and that's a pain to get rid of. You know, like when your dog gets poo stuck to its fur and you have to cut it out with scissors. I don't have a clip for that, and rightly so, because it's pure horror. Now, speaking of which, Art shows up with presents, which is at least Christmas related, but then he gives the Yeti mutt virtual reality porn. It is quite seedy and suggestive. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. Oh. We are excited, aren't we? Is this what Wookiees do this time of the year? Whack off to interspecies porn with family in the next room? No wonder Chewbacca ran off to join the resistance with a dysfunctional family like this back home. <sighs> we get more psychedelic crap jizzed in our eyes as this tart sings for about an eon wearing a wig made of diamonds and seagull shit. The Star Wars Holiday Special will continue in a moment. Christ on crutches, I need a break from this. Let's read some of your lovely YouTube comments. Great fans you are. You sound like the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. Has anyone ever told you you sound like you're trying to impersonate the Crypt Keeper? Holy shit, you sound like the Crypt Keeper. You sound like the Crypt Keeper's British brother. This is a good thing. <sighs> you sound like the Crypt Keeper. So, this is what the Crypt Keeper has been up to. <laughs> You, you guys are assholes. My, my voice is audible honey dripping into your ears. <sighs> oh, shit. Now I have to get back to the holiday special. Marla and her fur family Skype Princess Leia, who stumbles about high as a kite and is about as much use as a cock-flavoured lollipop. She just fobs them off and says, Yeah, I'm sure Chewbacca is okay, and honestly, I'd rather talk to a human. You racist twant. To spice things up, stormtroopers raid the Chewies because, I don't know, maybe they think they're hiding Watto and his relatives in the attic. The Empire has sent their most easily distracted goons, and there is more watching of TV screens. That is the whole special in a nutshell, watching screens that display either half-boring crap or the latest episode of Batshit Crazy. One guard is transfixed by a holographic show performed by Jefferson Starship. I think they got tacked on to this special because their name sounds very sci-fi. A more fitting artist would be Passenger of Shit. As the place is getting ransacked, Lumpy decides to watch a cartoon about his father and Luke Skywalker, which breaks the fourth wall a bit, but uh, it's not like it fucking matters. This part looks a lot like that movie, Heavy Metal, but without the big bouncing boobies. Much to Grandpa's displeasure, it's so crappily animated and all the characters move like they're made of jelly. The voice acting is terrible. Everyone sounds like they 
popped a Valium before hitting the recording studio. Harrison Ford is audibly melting into his microphone. What happened? I don't know. Well, somebody must know something. All of this is to introduce and build hype for Boba Fett before Empire Strikes Back hits the cinemas. The whole story is very nonsensical and involves Luke getting infected with a sleeping virus, which I think I, I caught watching this boring shit. Stormtroopers continue to fuck shit up and destroy Lumpy's possessions, which will probably give him psychological problems later in life. That is the face of a school shooter. A hairy Armenian school shooter. Lumpy sets up a, a box thingy. Transmitter? Oh, I, I don't fucking know, but it sets off another skit, which is a stultifyingly boring instructional video presented by a glitchy man who's been made robotic in post-production. Maybe the writers thought it had a quirky charm that children would find amusing, but it's just terrible. It's borderline experimental, and the show still isn't over yet. Mid-raid, the stormtroopers get a public transmission from the Empire showing how shitty Tatooine is, and how you should be grateful you aren't these people. No, no, don't continue doing important work, just watch a screen showing off the most infamous dive bar in Star Wars. Nothing says light-hearted holiday special quite like the gritty Moss Eisley Cantina, where some wench is getting harassed by a stalker. Seriously, this whole sketch has a very sinister vibe to it. This guy is creeping on a bartender because she gave a compliment one time, and he gives off some very rapey vibes. Come back soon. I'll be waiting. And I decided what you meant was exactly the thing I needed to hear. You'll change your mind, I just know you will. The Star Wars Holiday Special, fun for the whole family. Ooh. There is nothing uplifting about this holiday special, and more so with this part, as the tone is just bleak. The Empire puts martial law in effect, and so the cantina must close. So the barmaid sings a depressing song about being shut down, and all the alcoholics she's served. Well, at least Volva Face is getting into the groove. Then it ends with her being stuck with her harasser. Now he's going to love you his way. It's the most wonderful time of the year. The Empire Gestapo bugger off to find some more dissidents, except for one stormtrooper who stays behind to cause drama. But don't worry, folks, this stormtrooper won't kill them, pity, because Daddy and his special friend show up just in the nick of time. Han Solo causes this stormtrooper to fall to his death and destroy a perfectly good railing in the process. The reunion is very, very odd. Han pretty much says, Hey everyone, just killed a guy. Happy life day. Life sure is sacred, huh? Anyway, they all happily reunite, although the wife is eyeing up Chewbacca with suspicion. To tie up any loose ends, the trader tells the Empire the stormtrooper robbed them and ran away, and definitely is not resembling a squashed pizza at the bottom of a giant tree. And they take his word for it. No bloody wonder the Empire keeps getting defeated when you're this incompetent. The mindfuckery doesn't stop as the Wookiees teleport themselves into a dark void where everyone is gathered. This does not look like a holiday gathering. It looks like a satanic cult meeting for a black mass. I also didn't think it was family friendly when they sacrificed an Ewok to Moloch by burning him alive in a giant wicker man. I, I think that's what happened. My sanity was quite diminished by that point. To top it all off, Carrie Fisher sings her tits off while caressing Chewbacca's fur. Don't pull that face, Harrison. You were hitting that. Coked up pussy is the best pussy. Andy, what the fuck? Her singing is so bad, Chewbacca starts having Vietnam-style flashbacks. But still, the special continues, as we see the family gathered around to hold a seance for the stormtrooper that was killed so they can mock him from the land of the living. Merry fucking Christmas. It's over. I did it. I watched it. I, I watched it sober. Bloody hell. Was that a chore to get through? I watched it, so you don't have to. Give me a knighthood. What is the take home from all this? I think it's say no to drugs. Daisy, just say no. I think the main thing to take from this special is that George Lucas has always been a businessman. You can say he sold out with the remasters, the crummy prequels, or selling the franchise to Disney, but this holiday special is a testament to George's willingness to prostitute Star Wars for any old shit. 
18 months after Star Wars first came out, George figured he could make a lucrative franchise out of this and signed off on this Christmas special. That is why the franchise is doomed. Because even 40 years ago, the franchise was looking to be milked and used for any old crap. Disney themselves are squeezing at the teats with yearly Star Wars movies, animated spin-offs, and theme park attractions that don't really do the franchise justice. The holiday special is interesting because it shows the seeds of greed being planted and how George Lucas was all too eager to throw integrity away for a quick buck. Probably won't get a high-definition remaster of this. Pity we won't be seeing Fisher's coked-out pupils blown up to 4K or whatever. But the holiday special is a relic that needs to be remembered, no matter how awful it is. Merry Christmas, viewers! I hope you have a lovely Christmas and you get lots of nice presents. I think it's prudent to end this episode on a Christmas song. After all, it is the occasion for it. Ahem. My dick is big. My dick is very big. My dick is big. It's big. My dick is very big. So his dick is big. It's very, very big. I think his dick is big. It's very, very big. My dick so big, so really big. Black holes move toward my dick. My dick so big, it can be banned. It will be our president. My dick so big, that tiny place, it can distort the time and space. My dick so big. Merry Christmas, you fantastic family. Thank you for all your support and donations that help make this show. I'm so grateful. Keep being amazing, and I love you all. Have a great holiday. Professor, I, I broke something. <sighs> Merry Christmas.